Hello, this is week 11 or lecture 11 and in this lecture we're going to see JavaScript XML and JSON. Two very powerful ways or techniques if you like to transport or send data back and forth uh, from a, a web server to client machines and vice versa. So let's start with XML first, so this is part number one. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language and it's a language that allows us to create file and put data in that file. That file is well formatted and it's basically for transporting or carrying data from a web server to client machines or from the client machine to the web server. So it's about transporting data. Since client machines can be of can run any kind of operating system and they can be any machine this XML is very very portable okay it's independent of the hardware the machines and the operating system it's a markup language the same as the HTML remember guys hypertext markup language so both of them they belong to the same family of languages except that XML is about specifying data, it's like storing data, what do we have as data, it doesn't care about the look, whereas HTML is very much in how to display the data, remember bold, CSS, color and so on. Now another main or key difference between XML and HTML is that HTML has got a predefined set of tags. So P is for paragraph, B for bold, H1, remember, form, input. You cannot create your own tag. However, XML, the tags are the crea creation of the author of the file. Okay, for instance, week 11, as long as you close it, of course. So tag week 11, you, you close it here. Uh, slide one, you close it here. And in between, we have the actual data. So it's a, really, it's a, so it's a file to specify and store data. Uh, XML is often used in uh, together with HTML and JS, namely the AJAX, okay? So uh, just now I told you that with XML, you can uh, specify data, store XML in a server, then use JavaScript to bring that data back to the client uh, site. That's the ages. We're going to see this at the end of the, this uh, lecture. Uh, now, the syntax is really easy. So tag, they have, we have a parent, a child, a subchild, and so on. The very first one is always called a root. Now, this is an example. This is a very simple syntax. This is an example where I have students. I put here S to mean I have many students. This is student number one, begin and end. Guys, it's very important to close the uh, tags in HTML. You can omit them, all right? In HTML, you really can omit sometimes and the browser is smart enough to close them for you. But with XML, because you are the author, you have to be very, very uh, careful with your opening and closing and even the case. By the way, if it's lowercase, it has to be lowercase everywhere. I mean, um, uh, the, the tag. If it's capital, it has to be capital as well. Whereas in HTML, it's case uh, insensitive. All right. Now, this line is really optional and it's called a prolog for XML, just to give the version and to state that we're going to use any text here, any character. It can be uh, any international character. This is really optional. If you have to put it, it has to be the first one. Now, this is an example. So, as I told you, uh, the elements of the XML must be proper, properly nested. You must not uh, forget the closing one. XML can have attributes like an ID or type or language, L-A-N-G, or whatever you want to create, but it's really optional. And if you use it, yeah, it has to be coded. And the tags, as I told you, are sensitive. Capital letter, you have to stick with the capital letter. Lowercase, you have to stick with the lowercase. Now, this is an example of announcements. We have only one announcement. This is a to, a from, so root, child of the root, and children of this element. Now, the date here, I can write it this way, or I can further extend it, hence the name extensible. 
So either I use this file or this one, and both of them are kind of um, equivalent. All right. Um, but I cannot do this with HTML. HTML is not extensible. A tag, if you choose a tag P, it's going to be P. You cannot really further uh, expand it. Now, like HTML, XML has a DOM because XML is uh, going to be like a tree, a, a, a tree-like struct has a tree-like structure. So all the API that applies on HTML applies also on the not, let's say not all, but most of the uh, DOM uh, XML uh, HTML DOM API applies also on the XML. For instance, the getters, okay, the get element by ID, the get elements by tag. Uh, and you can add dynamically, you can remove, you can update the tags, all right? And the properties or API properties for XML, we have this very important three, like the, of course, the, the HTML as well. Inner HTML, node uh, type, and node name. Now, XML is like uh, HTML, it's a tree, it's a DOM, all right? So we always have a root. And from the root, you have a child. From the child, you can have sub-child or children. And children, each children has got one sibling, okay? Or one or many siblings. And we have the text nodes. Some elements are uh, pure elements, XML or kind of HTML elements. Uh, and some others are nodes. Every node, uh, let's say, uh, or how do I put that? Okay, a text node is not an element. It's not uh, an XML or HTML element. And text uh, content or whatever, the comment and the element, the tag are all of them uh, node. Okay, but only the tags are called elements. All right. So this is an example, we're going to see how to transform a string from, uh, how, to we, how do we transform a string of characters into an XML tree like structure. All right, so I'm going to use this example bookstore. So bookstore, in the bookstore I have books. And in the child book, I have, let's say, what do you have? Author, year, title, so title. And we have author. And we have year. Okay, the book title, let's say, intro to JS. Uh, sorry, the title. So I'm creating an XML uh, formatted uh, data or data formatted in, SK, in XML format. The author is me. Be careful about the spaces, guys, here, yeah, unless you mean them. You mean that there is space. And uh, 2021. That's the first book. I'm going to copy this and put it here, the second book. Intro to JSON and another author and this here. I'm going to take this one and put it as a string, okay? Uh, to execute. Here yeah, it could really be one line, okay? It could really be one line, but I'm not going to use one line. So control C. And we're gonna go here. So home and var my string my str receives. And what did I make the mistake? Mm. Alright, so my str and I have my string. 
Now, this is just a pure string that happened to be in an XML format with text. I'm going to create a DOM structure, a tree-like structure. I'm going to transform this one from this text into a DOM tree-like structure. So what do I do? I need, I'm transforming here is parsing. Do you remember, guys, when you have a string and you have a delimiter, comma or semicolon, and you want to cut or split that string using Java or JavaScript? Okay, so once you got the string and you split it based on a delimiter, you're going to create an array data structure. Same thing here. I'm going to use a transformation API function, okay, a parsing, we call it parse, okay. So I'm going to pass this string into a data structure. But the data structure is not going to be an array, it will be a tree. So first we have to create a parser, so var parse whatever you call it, okay, parse receives new DOM parser, all right, now I'm going to use var result tree, if you like, receives, so this is the data structure, parse dot, so parse form string, here I pass Two parameters, the string, okay, and the type. The type here is text. Uh, remember text CSS, text JavaScript, this is text XML. All right, now when I go to, not parse, sorry, no, uh, to result, result tree, it's a DOM document. Can you see, guys? And it has all the, uh, I can use all the API we need. So we have a bookstore. The first book here, you can see it's mass author, and the second one is bad author, okay? And now with the result tree, I can use get elements by ID, by name, by tag name. If I use by tag name here, for instance, and I use the very first one, the very first one was called what? Uh, bookstore. So bookstore, it gives me a collection. No, oh, zero. Uh, book get elements by tag name. Book store. Ah, uh, boost store. Oh gosh, I made a mistake. So it's a boost store here. Never mind, we're going to use this. So I have my HTML collection. All right. Uh, so it insists I have only one. It's going to give me an array of one. Okay, the length here is one. But if I want to go to the first one, I have to use the array zero, remember? And it's giving me the boost store here. This is similar. So this is really similar to this. Uh, documents, elements, that's the root. Okay, see guys, it gives me the same thing. So either you do, you do get elements by tag name, and by tag name, the tag name you specify is the very first one here. Okay, in here I'm going to use announcements in this example. In this example, I will be using students. That's the root. Guys, you may see the root here, the very first one. All right. Now, after I got this, I can use um, API. I use that, uh, got, uh, uh, the tree dot get in by tag name. Now I'm going to use the uh, API properties. Okay, so let's use this. So document element or boost or zero and here I can do dot get element by tag names where is it and I'm gonna use the inside here the book okay the book give me two or I could just use at the beginning as well uh, or I could do many ways. Or I could use here children. Remember, guys, children, not child nodes, and children, because children you give you elements, and child nodes, you're gonna give you all the uh, child nodes, including text. So if I have some space, I would have. If I had some space, let's do it again. Can 
not use it. Okay, never mind. Uh, this difference between child notes and children. Go, guys, go and verify the, the main difference. Okay. Now, what I can do, I'm gonna go to the very first one, child notes here. Maybe let's go to the second one. So one here, and I'm gonna call it B2. Okay, book number two. I'm gonna clear, and now B2. B2 dot inner HTML or B2, let us use B2. You see, guys, is the book here, is the whole element with title, author, year. So if I do B2 dot inner HTML, it's going to give me everything inside. If I do B2 dot children as well, and let's go to the author, so it's one. And I'm going to click author. So author dot inner HTML is you see here it's the bad, and we can use also node uh, name. The node name is author. Can you see? And node type is going to give me a code, which is one. Now let's go and see the node type. No type. I want you to go here and check the uh, the developer Mozilla API specification. And no type. We have one, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The two, five, six, twelve are obsolete. They are deprecated. Now we are mainly interested in one because it's the element. It's an element. Element means that thing that has a tag or inside a tag. Okay, like uh, P, D, or uh, in case of HTML, it's whatever you, you created. You created it. Okay. Uh, comment node, you see, is number eight. We have text node three. All right, so you have them here, guys, as well. And here it tells you whether the, the, the note type here has got children or not. A text, can you see guys, has no children. But element, it can have many kinds of children. In another element, or a text, or a comment, or a character data. This is to, it's, this is like the ampersand semicolon, to transform those uh, uh, language characters, special characters, into characters. All right? Now we have seen this transforming from uh, no uh, this is transforming from yeah from the string a pure string into a tree tree like document or tree like XML document and the very first one the the root is always document element or you can use get elements by tag name all right I'm gonna stop here and create another file another video all right and in the other video we're going to see two applications thank you